Mike, what do you need to start seeing more from the offense? Uh, you know, seem to cut back on penalties this last week, uh, move the ball some, but uh, still struggling in the red zone. What has to happen to, to help get more points on the board? Um, I think we just have to be you know, at our best uh, late in those drives. We've had eight double-digit drives that have ended in field goals. And so um, as much as that's impressive and we converted and stayed efficient, Talked about all those things. We, you know, we just made mistakes down in the red zone. Um, you know, I thought we were close um, Sunday. You know, just that doesn't get it done. You know, we continue to. You know, we'll have to run the ball, but I thought that there were some really good pockets, and you know, that's going to change this week depending on what they do and how they attack us and how we have to uh, attack them and, and try to create those opportunities and just you know, you know just continue to to practice it and continue to try not to have self-inflicted wounds against a good defense. They're, you know, excellent in the red zone. How much more does that complicate things? They're one of the two best red zone defenses in the league. Uh, well, I mean, every week is a challenge. So, you know, we'll have to have a good plan. We'll have to not, you know, beat ourselves. And, you know, when we get down there, just you know, find ways to, to create positive gains, not put ourselves behind uh, the sticks and have first and 20s and, you know, mistakes and things that, that mount up that make it uh, tough to convert touchdown red zone opportunities into touchdowns. Having played against Lamar several times over the years, have you noticed development in his game and certainly this year with a new OC? Well, you just see uh, such a calm, confident, uh, relaxed player. I mean, not, not to say that he's completed every pass that he's thrown, but he doesn't look rushed or hurried in the pocket. I think that uh, you know he's kind of staying in there a little bit. Even even uh, you know you just look at Pittsburgh for example. You know they brought a blitz zero, didn't necessarily complete it, but um, he didn't panic and fly out of there. He kind of stood in there and you know try try to deliver the pass. I, I do see a, a comfortable player um, who is still talented wherever he has the football. How is Stonehouse doing in in terms of hang time? I know that was one of the things that you wanted him to work on through camp. It's been pretty good. Uh, yeah, he had one punt. I didn't think that was his best last week. So if we're just going off of last week, probably would need better. I thought um, that he'd had some really good games leading up to that. Uh, you know, whether that's mixing in his direction and, and mixing in his hang time. So. You know, I think we're we're heading in the right direction there. Hopefully, uh, he can keep adding some different kicks to his arsenal. Seems like you should maybe be seeing more in, in terms of production from Harold at this point, or is it still a process? Yeah, no, I think that you know, I mean, we're we're we, we need to see production from from a lot of people. Uh, you know, that, that that entire you know, just making sure that we're getting. You know, production, and we're we're making the plays that we're supposed to make defensively. I think that's the biggest thing that uh, you know is is, is going to be important going forward is is to make the ones that we're supposed to make uh, work together when we when we have something going on. All the things that we've talked about and coached, and we'll continue to coach. But um, you know, I'm sure Harold will, will begin to to become productive, and and you know, we'll play you know all five guys that we take to the game and, and see. See who can help us. When it comes to playing overseas, what are some of the biggest challenges of game week for you and your staff and the team that are different than other weeks? Uh, well, we came in early. You know, we I mean, came in on Tuesday just to try to get ahead, knowing that there'd be a travel day. Um, you know, just more conscious of, of recovery and, and hydration and our, you know, travel. Um, you know, our ops department, our equipment staff. I mean, that's a lot for these guys to undertake. They do a fantastic job make it uh, easy for the players and the coaches and the video staff and everybody outside of uh, the players and coaches. They've, they've been amazing, um, you know, so we'll pick up, take our, you know, computers or laptops, try to get the, some stuff covered on the plane, try to get some rest and then uh, have everything set up when we get there. Some of the Ravens players, they, they said the last time they went there, guys were falling asleep in meetings and just having trouble adapting. <laughs> Do you recall when you guys went, did you have any issues like that? 
I mean, guys fall asleep in meetings here probably too. So what's the difference with the chime change? Um, yeah, I, I don't recall it being an issue. You know, I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, we, we're going to get there. We're, we're going to do some, some activities, get into meetings. You know, we're going to try to move around here after we get off the plane, do some meetings, get out on the field and then, you know, give them some time and then get back up on Saturday and, and have a, a normal, what we would hope a normal Saturday. Um, so I, I don't know what the, with the length of the day, you know, let's say if today we were in London, what that would look like. Everything unique about the, I, mean, I know you're focused on the game, but anything unique about the game day experience that Sunday at, at Wembley? Well, I enjoy the, the, the fans that have everybody, you know, 32 different, you know, jerseys on, you know, different teams. And so I, I think that that's pretty unique. I think that's cool to see all the teams represented. Um, and hopefully we'll have plenty of fans over there, excited to get over there. But that is something, you know, I mean, you'll look over and see, you know, Tom Brady jersey, I'm sure, or, you know, Josh Allen or anybody else around the league. When you look at the Ravens offense, Coach, skill position-wide, do you see a little more speed there with this group? Uh, well, Aguilar certainly got the ball downfield. Zay Flowers, uh, pretty much everything that we thought uh, in the um, – you know, going through the draft process with his speed, his quickness, change of direction, and uh, you know, obviously working uh, Beckham back in there, uh, Bateman one after another. You know how uh, reliable that uh, Andrews is. So th there's there's plenty of options for Lamar. Not to mention, you know, when the quarterback's probably the fastest one of them all. There's plenty of speed. It's paid from trailing this week, and, and once he's back, what can he add to the to the full stable? Of well, hopefully he can add, you know, where he was going at points last year for, a, you know, a setback, and, and this year, you know, being able to, to move the ball downfield to be a big um, player that builds speed, that has some speed down the field, that has good play strength, um, you know, that can help us down the field. Well, they they've always been good. I, I think that they're one. They play with great fundamentals. I think that they, you know, they challenge. They've got good ball skills. Uh, safeties are interchangeable parts, uh, down and back. And um, you know, I think Stevens has had a good year. And you know, Darby's filled in for our Humphreys, and he'll play. And we know how good that uh, Humphreys is, but. You know they've got good size, and uh, they they you know they challenge you down the field and you know play multiple coverages too, which I I respect. You mentioned that out of this game, you, you've done it in in the past too. You, on the red zone trips, you, you had four. You got the touchdown, and you had the penalty on the one that led to the first and twenty. So we ask you about it, and you talk about the first and twenty. We and we every, didn't convert the fourth and one. Right, but you don't you don't talk about the two series that were first and ten like regular yeah. series. And then we gained two yards, right? Gained two yards and didn't convert. I, you know, we we have to be better. You know, so we'll, we'll see where we are this week, Paul. I'm not going to recap everything that we we didn't do well. You know, I'm trying to, to focus on how we're going to try to score against against the Ravens and uh, looking forward to it. I'm asking generally though, when you guys look back at games. You always seem to really harp we, on the the getting behind the sticks part, and not on the not moving the ball when you're in regular down and distance situations. Well, those are probably what I would call unforced errors, or whether we snap the ball over the quarterback's head against Cincinnati. Um, so th those are unforced errors, or we didn't block a guy. And you know, again, I, I'm I'm trying to say that there's some really good things to have eight double digit drives uh, against you know. Good competition. Unfortunately, we have to make sure that we're be we're at our best late in those drives. Talking about guys needing to make plays that they're supposed to make, I guess. I mean, what's your challenge to players to maybe make the play that maybe extraordinary play? I know you haven't had a pick since uh, maybe since week one. Your challenge there? For tip guys? a ball. We we don't tip any balls. Like yeah. this is this is pro football, Jimmy. We, we pay them. They go make plays. They, it's defensive football. Go play fast. Go play violent. Go go play aggressive and. Cover your man, rush, like same thing that 31 other teams are doing.
The Ravens have gotten some, or had some trouble holding on to the ball lately. Is that something that you hope to be able to start? Sure, I hope. Oh, you know, I mean, certainly hope. You know, what I mean, but we have to go out there and put it to action. You know, we got to knock it off somebody. We got to hit them hard enough to knock the ball loose. Tip a pass uh, that that hopefully gets intercepted. Uh, have have some some ball disruption on the receiver. Guys running to the football, bounces up in the air and intercept it. Job. What do you need to see from, from Nick in terms of getting back and starting job? What's he need to show you? Is it just working out rough or start? Oh, I, I mean, he, he he's going to have to play pretty well right now. I think I think Chris is doing a nice job over there. Um, so, you know, Nick Nick will keep working his way in there, but I, I'm not ready to, to to make that that move. I think Chris has been, you know, nice surprises playing over there. You got. We're gonna go five minutes of ball disruption and ball security today. It's a part of practice that you guys see. So any other drills that you guys have, or you want to recommend, let me know. We'll we'll keep doing them. That's again. We just can only practice it, emphasize it, uh, have an awareness where the football is and when the front hand comes off the quarterback. You know, I mean, when he takes his front hand off the ball. You know, all the things that we we try to coach and. Um, you know, keep working on it. Did you have any conversation individually with Christian about what your expectations are for him going forward? Um, no, I mean, no, no more than I would have any other time. Just do his job and focus on, you know, fundamentals and, and competing and challenging. And that, you know, sometimes those those things happen out there when you play corner. And I think the most important part is how you respond and, um, you know, and understand that, you know, they're going, to, they're going to keep coming after you, or they're going to keep double moving you uh, until you uh, until you fix it. You mentioned, I know, the other day about Chig and, and inconsistency. Is that more blocking, rail running? No, or... just just details. Just just the details. You know, just you know, little thing for you know, had a, had a, had him on a seam route in the red zone, um, and just late late getting off the ball. You know, so just something like that. It's just focusing in on the road, knowing that it's going to be, uh, you know, got to got to be able to key the ball and get off and get get up the seam. And you know, we ended up throwing it to hop, but um, you know, trying to trying to find some ways for him to to get down the field and just a little thing like that, just some little details. Mike, winning every time uh, is the key, but how important might it be even more going into a bye, trying to get to 500? Well, it would be, you know, it'd be nice to get get back, uh, you know, even, and, and then give ourselves a chance after the bye to to put something together. I don't, I don't disagree with you one bit. Yeah, well, we're all responsible. It'll be more than just the front seven. We'll all be responsible, and you know, corners will have to tackle, and safeties will have to, to tackle and fit, especially when the quarterback has the football. So it is it is a great challenge. Um, they don't just run it with the quarterback. I mean, you know, Edwards is is a tough physical runner. Uh, Hill is a great change of pace back, and then you know, whoever else they 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 activate between you know Drake or Gordon, but. Um, Th those guys have been doing a nice job, and then when the quarterback has his opportunities, um, you know he's making the most of them. So it, it is a great challenge. You know, it's a multiple run scheme, not just you know inside outside zone. They have gap schemes and pull guys, and you know the quarterback read stuff. So uh, they, they've always done a nice job, and, and that's something that they uh, they've been able to do. Uh, I wouldn't anticipate seeing Traylon out there today. Uh, Molden probably won't practice. Gifford probably won't practice. Uh, Danico and Hoppe will be out there probably the second half of practice. Thank you very much. Thanks, Josh. Trying to think if there's anybody else. No, I think that's about it. Oh, Simmons, Simmons and Tart. You learned on your journeys in terms of adjustment or anything like that that you can pass on to? Yeah, you know, I've uh, been over there a few times now, so just try to convey to the guys, um, 
take advantage of the, of the rest on the plane. You know, uh, when you get there, hit the ground running, take advantage of your Friday, and then uh, you know try to get a good night's rest that Friday night once we uh, once we get there. So. Um, then, then after that, it's handle business as usual. Don't try to look back and see what time it is back in the States. Uh, look at the clock, whatever time it is, that's what it is, and, and tell yourself that and just go with it. Have you ever done that the more trips you took? Did you get better at adjusting? Or, or? I, I don't think that helps. You know, you, you kind of learn those little tips that I just mentioned, and I don't know if they're tips, but thoughts that I, that I just mentioned. And then, um, yeah, the biggest thing is don't try to compare. For me, it was don't try to compare what time it is back back home. You know, you, you can't think about it that way, otherwise you're gonna be uh, in a bad situation. That being said, did it feel awkward like playing at what, 9.30, 9 o'clock in the morning? You don't think about it. Yes, <laughs> I, I didn't, you know, maybe some guys did, but personally it's like whatever time the clock said, then that's what time I, I told myself it was and, and tried to go from there. Did you ever go earlier in the week on any of your other trips or was it always kind of like a Thursday flight? Yeah, it was the same, same pattern on all the trips that I've been on. Trick for getting rest on planes. Some people I know can't get comfortable sleeping on planes. How do you figure that out? Um, I actually sleep pretty easily on planes. Um, my wife gets annoyed because, you know, as soon as the the engines start up, then it's easy for me to, to nod off. But uh, yeah, it's tough to sleep for that long on a flight. But you know, thankfully they, they set us up on a good plane with uh, some good uh, seat situations. Well, the problem is a pilot, I guess. Isn't it? Do I? <laughs> yeah, no, that could be an issue. That could be an issue. Baltimore's red zone defense, best in the league. How much of a challenge did you guys try to get going in there? Yeah, no question. Uh, obviously, tough tough defense um, all across the field, but in, down in the red zone, obviously, tops in the league. So, um, been an uh, emphasis for us this week, no matter who we were going to play. You know, obviously, how, how we finished last week, uh, not, not finishing those drives down in the red zone. But, you know, going against the top team in, in the league, it's going to be uh, crucial that we execute down there and give ourselves sevens and not threes. Atmosphere game day. I mean, when you play on a road, true road game, it's probably loud the other way home. You've got the crowd behind you there. Do you remember anything in particular just about what game day experience is like? Yeah, I just remember a fun atmosphere. You know, I don't I remember, uh, obviously, it's not a deafening, you know, um, Arrowhead or or um, Seattle type, type atmosphere, but there's a buzz, there's an energy, there's an excitement. The fans are into it. Uh, you know, seemingly kind of both ways, right? You know, if anybody makes a good play, then they're going to cheer. Uh, they're going to get loud at critical points in the game, you know, whether it's a crucial, you know, third, fourth down or a critical situation. But, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun atmosphere. There's a, a buzz in the air, and, and you definitely enjoy it. Uh, Mike, you said a couple times that, that maybe you'd like to see Chig get a little more consistent in terms of details. From, from your standpoint, what does that mean, you know, in, in terms of the passing game? Yeah, you know, Chick's done some good things for us and, and look to uh, to build on it. You know, we just have to be, like you said, consistent. And it's not just Chig, you know, it's across the board, you know, whether uh, it's to me or the backs or tight ends or whoever the case may be, you know, just be consistent in what we're doing. Um, you know, he's a playmaker. He's great with the ball in his hands. So uh, if we can get him in space with the ball in his hands, that's going to be a good, good thing for us. What could Traylon help layer in if and when he's back? Well, we know what Traylon brings to the table. You know, obviously he's big, uh, he's fast, he's strong, he's athletic. Um, so, you know, hopefully uh, we get him back sooner rather than later. Is there anything you can – and, boy, you and DeAndre have developed a pretty good relationship. at eight catches last week, but still hasn't caught a touchdown yet. Is there anything that you can pinpoint as to why you guys haven't been able to find the end zone with each other? We haven't scored enough touchdowns, period. You know, I think uh, – you look at, at uh, you know, get down the red zone, kicking field goals, and get behind the sticks, hurting ourselves, putting ourselves in long yard situations. Um, we got to score more as an offense, as a whole, and of course, you know, DeAndre will be a part of that. With DeAndre, there was a play uh, last week where he ran like a curl route, and you were under load the rest of the pocket, and you kind of slid to your right, and he recovered with you and, and popped in that window. Does that play happen first game of the year, or is that an example of the progress you guys have made? just you know, being on the same page? Yeah, I think no question uh, an example of progress and just building that chemistry, that relationship and being on the same page. Um, you know, it comes with time, comes with reps and uh, felt, you know, we were in a good spot going into the season and it's only grown as we've had, you know, hundreds of more reps throughout practice and, and games as well. What would you say is the next step like, of progress in that relationship? Right? I just, we don't got to do anything totally different, just keep on the path that we're on, you know, that, that, that Chemistry is going to continue to grow and uh, and build as we move throughout the season and, and take advantage of those opportunities where uh, maybe it's not 
exactly drawn up on paper the way that, uh, that it ends up, but we're able to take advantage of, of some space and, and create a play. What's your impression about Chris Hubbard since he's been here? I know Mike made it sound like he's kind of held down that job and been willing to make any kind of change there since. What has he done well, and uh, how, how's that been for you? Chris is great, man. He's a pro. He comes in, um, you know, steps right into the role, comes out, competes, does his job day in and day, day out. Never, uh, never complains. Never has anything negative to say. He's always got a smile on his face, and he and he's here to work and do his job. So, uh, you look at things you want to see from an offensive lineman, um, an attitude you want to see. Um, you know, he comes in and does his job to the best of his ability, and he works at it each and every day. And uh, you know, I love being able to uh, have him in the huddle with me. Ryan, going into the five three three, a lot different than the latter. Just how much do you guys kind of emphasis emphasize this week in particular? everything that comes into that challenge, even going overseas, playing Baltimore, um, going in the bye with the win. Yeah, it's huge. You know, you want to, uh, you know, we want to win a lot more games than, than we are right now. So, you know, the that's the onus this week is to, to finish this week with a win, no matter the circumstances, where we're at, who we're playing. Uh, Got to find a way to, to go win this game on the road um, and, you know, head into the bye uh, at three and three, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah, we got to execute. Uh, I think we've had some opportunities that we didn't execute. Maybe um, we've hurt ourselves with some penalties and got gotten some long yard situations, which obviously hurts. Um, and you know, just being efficient. You know, we still got to keep that efficiency. We've been efficient moving the ball down the field and then getting to the red zone and and gotten. Uh, some inefficient plays. So got to keep that efficiency as we move. And then when we get an opportunity to, to maybe hit a game plan play or, or shot uh, into the end zone, um, take advantage of it. It's obviously a business trip. But what do you tell the younger guys who maybe haven't been through this experience about also enjoying it, whether that's going out and seeing a little bit of the city or even just seeing the foreign crowd? Yeah, enjoy the experience. And I've, I've been over there three times. And I still haven't seen any of the you know, touristy landmarks or anything. So this will be the fourth trip, and I probably still won't see them. So, um, you know, eventually I'll go back and, and be a tourist and enjoy uh, being in the city. You know, I, I do enjoy being there, you know, meeting people and, and getting a different culture and, and soaking that up. But uh, for me, I'm trying to prepare my mind, my body, and get ready to play a game. So um, not too much, you know, tourist activities going on. Can I say on, on, on Twitter that you're offering two tickets to some fan that will uh, – I guess at random or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we can give, give uh, away a couple tickets to a fan over there uh, uh, if they're wearing Titans gear. So that's the uh, the caveat. Got to be support the Titans, and hopefully they can uh, come cheer for us on Sunday. What's said in the past that you're not a big fan of turf. What do you know about this playing surface? Have you had a chance to reach out to anybody that's played on it? And how do you prepare your body for something you haven't played on before? No, I haven't. Haven't really given much thought to it. Haven't talked to anybody about it. You know. Um, it is what it is. You got to have to go play the game, and we'll see how it is in warm ups. And then after that, you know, you can't really think about it. Just got to go play the game and, and deal with whatever it is. Ryan, what's your hat? Uh, this, is a, this is a hat that uh, Jerome, our equipment manager, made. A uh, little inside joke. He, he helps us catch balls. And um, all right, we, it's classic overrun, the COR, because he always overruns. He's standing there, and then he'll like take three steps and then catch it behind him. So it looks like a bad throw. Uh, so. <laughs> It was a classic overrun. So then he made a he made a hat to go for. It. Uh, what's the, talk about that relationship with, with DeAndre. Is that the primary reason you think for the, for the big jump in the production you guys had Sunday, or, or is there more to it uh, than, than just that? Well, I think it goes into it. But you know, you look at uh, having some time in the pocket. You know, I had some clean pockets. Was able to throw from um, even couple where I was able to hold it for just a half tick longer, like the one he mentioned, where he was able to move. You know, it was a clean pocket initially, ended up getting hit on the throw, but I had that extra half second to, to be able to let him uncover uh, into the space. So, um, you know, having that protection is, is huge and, and getting the ball downfield, you know, had a couple shots down the field to him. Um, so it all, it all works together. Thanks, all right, thank you. Uh, did you kind of look back at Sunday knowing things got to be better? Yeah, we moved in, um, got the correction from Sunday, um, moving on to Baltimore. We know they get a run first. Uh, we got to be able to stop the run. We got to affect the quarterback this week. So. Were you disappointed in that? Um, I wouldn't say disappointed in affecting the quarterback, more of stopping the run. I think they had almost 200 rushing yards on us. Um, 
I think that's where we kind of lost the game at. Um, you know, they, they kind of control the game by running the ball. And, you know, like I said, we take pride on stopping the run around here. And that wasn't there to, uh, last week. But we got a new opportunity this week. Another team who, you know, um, up there in the rush, uh, rushing attempts and rushing yards um, in the league. So we got another opportunity um, to face another good running team. And like I said, everything starts with the quarterback. And they got some, they backs different. But at the end of the day, they try to run the ball. And like I said, we got to be better this week. You guys haven't had a whole lot of turnovers this year in terms of takeaways. Are there things that you can do to try to create those, or, or is it just something that you have to do by by taking care of your business? And we just, for one, uh, everybody got to be on the same page. Everybody got to do their job. But at the end of the day, um, I guess Coach Ray talked about it this morning. You know, trying to create them turnover, hammering the ball more, um, batting balls in the line of scrimmage because majority of them balls that get batted gonna get intercepted. So. Um, then we just got to do a better job and, I mean, eventually get to the quarterback as well because, like I said, I didn't say it before, they fumble the ball the most on the field. So if we could get to the quarterback and uh, make him uh, fumble the ball and create turnovers, you know, we could help all um, help this team get wins, especially on defense. The last London trip was a year before you got here. What, what, uh, what have guys told you about what to expect? What are your maybe expectations going in? Um, a long trip, I guess. I mean, other, other than that. No, I haven't been um, looking too much up to London. Um, and I've been thinking more of a, um, you know, just a business trip. Um, of course, like guys gonna go and you know um, see what the city like. You know, I'm hopefully I get some time to go down there and see what the city like. But you know, my main goal is to go over here and get a win, and um, I hopefully that's what's on a lot of. I hope that's the main goal for everyone, and not just oh we're going out the country to play ball, but let's get a win. What's the furthest you've ever been from home? Um. I would say Brazil. I, I took a trip out to Brazil. I think after my rookie year, so that was about a nine-hour flight as well. But I mean, I, the, the long flight not going to really bother me. You know, I kind of got my routine. Every time I get off a flight, how I kind of re, uh, do my recovery. So you know, I'm not looking. Um, not, that's not going to be a problem. Like I said, that our goal is to go here and get a win. So. How do you sleep on planes, and maybe who, who's going to be storing the most? Who, who you hear the most? Of? I, I don't know. I, I mean, that's why I try to make sure I get didn't get beside no big guy. I think I'm sitting beside like um, I think like KB right there in the aisle. I'm on the left side of the plane. Hopefully I'm not by no one who's really snore because that's not gonna be fun for nine hours. So. Who's that guy? I don't know. That's the thing. I I, I don't want to be beside Arden for sure. I know I I could just look at him and tell he snores, but yeah, not at all. I mean, not. Nah, but it, it's just, like I said, it's gonna be a fun trip. But um, like I said, we we just need to get a win this weekend. Obviously, he's battling all the other stuff like you know the, the whole London deal. People probably gonna have family over there. You gonna want to do sightseeing and things like that. Uh, but we have to keep our the the main objective. The main objective was to go out there and try to get a win. It's a business trip at the end of the day. Um, but then obviously you got a talented Baltimore team, a physical team, a uh, team that wants to run the ball. And obviously you have a dynamic athlete and quarterback in Lamar Jackson. So. Uh, it's presenting a lot of challenges, so we got to overcome all those. Well, they've, they've, they've had some drop passes and, and uh, some fumbles in recent games. Is that a, a, an area that you all can maybe take advantage of? Yeah, I mean, I don't expect them to drop as many passes as they did in the Pittsburgh game. Um, we got to make sure we're going to be tight in coverage. Um, but, you know, Lamar Jackson has fumbled a lot, so I think when we're rushing the pass and we're trying to get after him, we have to make sure we're trying to hammer the ball, not just get a sack, but actually get a forced fumble as well. Um, but, yeah. Uh, they still have really good receivers. Obviously, Mark Andrews is an elite top-tier tight end. Uh, he's been one of the best in the league for a while, so it's going to be a good challenge for us and for myself covering him and um, obviously all the other uh, receivers that he has as well. Um, I remember, you know, just the adjustment of the time adjustment is real. Um, like trying to sleep as much as you can on the plane over there. Because when you get over there, I think it's going to be like 12.30 Nashville time. So your body's going to feel like I'm supposed to be asleep right now. But you have to fight, like find a way to fight to stay up. Because I remember some guys did, because you know, I think we got off the plane, practice. We had some time off, some guys went to sleep. And then they were up like 4 in the morning. They were up there pretty much the entire day. So trying to catch up with your body clock. So there will be some advice that I give the guys. is trying to sleep as much on the plane. But when we land, try to stay up a whole another 24, a whole another day. And then try to get your body readjusted. Was it awkward, like playing, what, 9.30? Yeah, it was. it was. I mean, like I said, it's, it's different for sure. It's different. So, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, that's what they pay us to do. You make the hard look easy. So, you know, it's going to be no excuses. You know what I mean? So we got to go out there and do what we need to do. Try to get our bodies adjusted now 
like trying to catch up on our sleep now, like getting to bed 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock if we have to, to try to make sure that our bodies is, is rejuvenated when we get over there.